Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and welcome to the complete guide to Master Diva. Now, the way this tutorial series is going to work, guys, is every video we're going to talk about a specific section of Diva. Today, that is going to be the oscillators. And then at the end of the video, we're going to be creating sounds with what we've learned without accessing any of the other parameters of Diva until we reach those respective videos. What this means, for instance, today, we will only be making sounds with the oscillator section of Diva at the end of the video to bring everything we learned together. Now, the reason I do it this way is so that it becomes a more of a practical tutorial instead of me just explaining what every little thing is and where every little thing is at. So you understand how everything comes together to give you amazing sounds and what you can do with just the basics as well. Now, Diva is a great synth for those looking for an alternative to the expensive hardware synths out on the market. Personally, me coming from me, I used to have this synth full of hardware synths and I ended up selling all of them due to Diva just for the fact that I could create a lot of the sounds I created in those synths in Diva and it almost sounded exciting exact to my Moog Sub 37, to my Prophet, to my ARP Odyssey, and to my Korg MS-20. So again, there's stuff I miss with them guys, but Diva is amazing and hopefully by the end of the series you will be able to use it to create sounds for your music. With that being said, if you want to support the channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find all of my sound design work. And let's get started with this. All right guys, and welcome inside of Diva. Now when we first open it up, you're going to be greeted Register 2, Francisco, that's my name, nice to meet you. The version you are in. And then a bunch of knobs, so it can get a little intimidating. But again, we're going to keep things simple and focus on this section today right here from the mixer to the triple VCO. And when we first open up Diva, of course, we're going to have the, the sound that you're greeted with. So it's a little better than Silence 303-ish bass sound. But this sound has also been used in a song just like that 303. Um, so this one is going to be a sound based on velocity. So if I increase the velocity... Decrease it, the filter opens up less. So we will learn stuff like that so you can make sounds like this if that's your cup of tea. But what we're gonna do right now, guys, is go into our presets, into our templates, and we're gonna utilize the mini poly, which is gonna give us a Moog-based sort of um, chain that we can utilize to make sounds. Now, we're gonna focus on the oscillator section today, guys. Okay, so keep things simple, and we're gonna make sounds as we explain every little thing so that you understand how everything comes together and what parameters you can use here to make what kind of sounds and whatnot. Now, I might cheat a little, again, by adding a bit of uh, envelopes, but don't worry about that. It's just to prove a point and to give you some uh, real life situations where some of these kind of effects and sounds have been utilized, okay? That being said, guys, let's get started. So first off here, we're going to have the mixer where you're going to have your volumes for oscillator one, two, and three. I think that's very simple. You can bring in, you know, three different oscillators, different wavetables and whatnot, okay? From there, we're going to have other settings which we will talk about later on in the video. Now, from here, we're going to have our waveform, which is very important. One of the tips I can give to you right now off the bat that will help you a lot as a sound designer is to familiarize yourself with these um, different waveforms, the saw, the square, the triangle, and... I guess an inverted saw. And these are going to be usually more, some of the more popular wavetables to utilize to make music, okay? So if you listen to, let's say, uh, techno right now, a lot of saws being utilized, a lot of plucks uses the saw, then mouse uh, pluck, a lot of... Um, a lot of reggaeton music is utilizing a square plug filtered, which we will talk about later, etc. But again, familiarize yourself with them and what you can do with them, and that will help a lot. As this is where usually you're going to decide the color, the tone of the sound, and where you start your sound design journey. Okay, so in the wavetable selector here, guys, we can go from left to right in a very smooth manner. So it's going to be sort of like a waveform in a way. Now I'll open up the scope for this. First, we're going to have the triangle. Or sorry, an inverted saw. What that means is that, as you can see, if we compare it to this saw, the direction changes. Okay, now one fair warning, you never want to have two of these saws inverted plane because then you get something. As you can see, that kind of phases out. It sort of sounds like a, like a square effect. Obviously, it looks like a square. But this is something you don't want, especially in the low end. Because then if you wonder, why does my low end cut out at certain spots? You know, and you have like, doom, doom, and it's because you have a saw that's a uh, different polarity than the other one, and they cancel each other out when they're at total opposite. So when the saw, uh, let's say, is the total opposite, like one is like this, and the other one's upside down, you're going to get something that cancels out. So be careful with that, okay? From the saw, okay, we're going to have a square, which for me, it's one of my favorite waveforms for very fat, very fat bass lines, okay? And as we move from the square to the right, you're going to notice the sound thins out. This is called the pulse width. And a lot of people utilize this to either one modulate or put something on it that changes it. 
you can see that as I'm kind of trying to get that movement, we get very nasty sort of like <laughs> kind of sounds to it. So you can modulate that in the future once we talk about LFOs. Okay, now the main thing is that it thins out. Now you may be wondering, yo, Sen, who would use this kind of sound in a song? Well, if you've heard Tiesto, I forgot the name of the song. Da, 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 dun, dun, da, da. It's going to be based on a, a variation of the square, which... Okay, now if I cheat a little here and add a bit of... I already forgot the melody, but this is the basis of the sound that he utilizes it, and then he puts a bunch of effects. So this is where we're going to select the waveform where you start your sound design journey, guys. Now to the left of that, we're going to have the range, which just means octave. So if I'm at 8, we're at the center, 0 octave. If I put this down, 16. We go lower and lower and then as we move up we get higher okay now the reason we have a range and why, why would that even matter is if i want to create a sound let's say that i wanted to cover a huge part of this frequency spectrum then that's where i can kind of do this i could have maybe this guy be super low And that's why one of the reasons why we have that is so that we can kind of layer these sounds. And again, it's going to become more apparent as you do it, why you would want upper layers. Sometimes your sound might sound good, like the bass, but you want to layer with something. And again, we're going to get more into the theory of that later on in the video. Now, we're going to focus on the detunement here. We're going to skip this for now, but we'll come back to it. Now, uh, oscillator 2 and 3, as you can see, we're going to have detunement values for it instead of the sync. And this is going to detune away from this guy, of course. And the reason we use that, guys, is let's say that I want to make a sound like, you know, I'm into Euro trance. We want to live back in the 20s. Or you're making trance. This is where you're going to add a bit of... And it's going to sound very kind of lush. But you can also make re-spaces with it. Now, have you ever heard like an Asus track? He does this a lot where he has the two men and it sounds very analog -y because as I go higher octave, you can see that it moves a lot faster. Now, the reason for this, guys, is that uh, depending on the pitch that you're at, let's say this saw is at one pitch, one pitch, and this one is at 1.10, then this saw is going to be moving a lot faster as the pitch increases. It's just physics, and I really don't know the theory behind it, but I know that as I add detunement, you get a bit of movement. And the higher you go, it becomes faster because, again, this saw is moving a lot faster than this saw up here, and that creates that movement that you hear in a lot of sounds. And, of course, in the... <laughs> and those kind of sounds. And imagine that with reverb, but again, let's keep things simple now. So that's what the detunement is for. Another really good use for it is, again, if we want to make sounds that are plus seven or the perfect fifth, which is something very popular that a lot of people like to do. For instance, here I could go too soft. And I'm going to put this one at five, and I might go reverse because sometimes I have issues getting this to sound right. And we're going to go negative on it just to improve my point. I, I always have issues just getting this right. Okay, so these are going to be those kind of sounds. I call it Stefan Botin. And again, that's all done with a filter, which we will activate, which we will unlock at a future video. But I'm just cheating a little to prove my point on how these sounds come together. So that's stuff you can do with the detunement, as well as you can also create stab hits. So the way that works is we're going to have this saw play the roof note, obviously. And then we're going to have this one at three, which is going to give us. And from there, we can mess with, of, of course, the, the taste, the tone. Okay, so that's going to give us more of, uh, again, if you're trying to create those chord stabs, okay? And we'll make a massive one at the end of this video as well because we can utilize Oscillator 3. Okay, so we've talked about the waveform, and it's all the same for these guys, and we've talked about the two minute and the range. Now, let's get into some stuff that's a little bit more, like, fun and a little bit more intricate. Now, here we're going to have the FM section. Now, 
first thing I'm gonna say is the FM inside of Diva is different from the phase uh, the phase modulation that happens with standard like DX7 FM or the Serum FM. This is exponential FM, and the problem with exponential FM is that when you utilize it, it can get sounds out of key a lot faster. So notice here, I'm gonna have this guy quiet, and I'm gonna bring this up. You can see how it just gets the sound out of key, but it can give you really interesting results as well. For instance, here, I'm gonna have this guy. Okay, now we're starting a little drum and bass, a little dubstep. And now, again, the FM is gonna work in conjunction with your range. So obviously FM1, that means oscillator one is being routed into two and three, and this guy is modulating the frequency of the bottom one so it's adding movement to it so again don't confuse it with fm uh again uh, i think it's a uh, linear or phase style phase modulation style of fm which is what you kind of guys know as as like the womp womp sound the uh, the two signs going inside of each other and making love and giving you like fm based sounds like a night bass and stuff no this is different kind of fm it's very useful for creating these kind of sounds and it's also useful for creating uh, bells type of sound so that means that I can go really high or low on this and again yeah I know you, you some of you guys are liking like holy shit I didn't know you could do that with diva of course you know but we can make these kind of like belly sounds with uh, let's change this up a bit like It's kind of demonic sounding, um, but that's the idea of the FM. And again, guys, there's a lot of cool stuff to do with it. And again, it works in conjunction with um, FM ratios as well. Like I said already, if your saw is up an octave, it's moving at a faster rate than a saw that is at a, this middle octave, etc. So when you understand that, you understand why these sounds are being produced in that certain way. And from there, you can kind of start to create stuff with it. So very cool. Again, I used to avoid this FM until I actually learned what it actually does. So very fun kind of thing to mess around with, okay? From that, we move to the bottom. We're going to have a tune mod. Now, the tune mod is routed to the pitch of the sound, and in essence, it's going to provide a bit of uh, modulation to the pitch. Now, the question is, why would we want this? Well, if you're creating uplifters, downlifters, or you want a sound to go pew, or uh, a hoover, etc., this is what this is useful for. Now, we haven't talked about envelopes, but I will activate them just so that you understand uh, how it works and what it's doing. Now, obviously, here we're going to have three little kind of switches, which I wish I could touch and move because they sound very satisfying to do. And that just means here, oscillator one's getting the tune mod, oscillator two and then oscillator three so we'll do it to oscillator one again with a saw and, and notice what happens when we move it up we get that now in conjunction with the envelope which we will talk about in another video you can get reverse we'll go higher on uh sorry envelope two Okay, uh, so again, that's what that's gonna do. The two mod is gonna automate the pitch and you can go straight plus to give it more punch if needed. Okay, and again, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it if that's what you wanna do, but that's how that works. Now below that, we're gonna have a shape mod. And uh, like I said, guys, this waveform is smooth in the sense that it goes from a saw squares, uh, sorry, triangle square, square, uh, square to pulse width and stuff. So this LFO is useful again. Uh, we'll talk more about LFOs in another video, keep things simple, but this is what this shape mod's gonna do, is it's gonna modulate this, and that's why it's there. Okay, so we're gonna do it at a faster rate. Now, obviously, if we go positive, this thing is moving more up. And if we go negative, it's moving backwards. So if I have it at a saw to a square. Okay, you can see it sounds a little weird, but you get the idea of that. So again, theory again, back to the first one. Oscillator one, oscillator two, 
and oscillator three, or you can route it to all of them if that's what you want. Again, that's where you're gonna create a bit of movement to the sound as well. But that's what the shape mod, the tune mod is for. And then from there, we're gonna have the sync. Now, I always have a hard time explaining the sync, guys, and for reasons that I just don't understand. I mean, I understand what it is. Essentially, when you sync it up, you're forcing oscillator two and three to restart its phase or go to the pitch of oscillator one. If, if I'm wrong, correct me on that. But the type of sounds you get with it are very gnarly and kind of Daft Punkish, if you want to kind of say. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate it on oscillator A uh, two and three. Now, the reason this works, as you see, as I'm detuning this guy is because, again, this guy is synced to um, oscillator one and oscillator one is going to stay in key. But this detunement is changing on it. So it's going to start here and it's going to be forced to go to the key or the pitch of oscillator one, which creates this very cool effect. <laughs> I can layer all of these if I wanted to together and do similar stuff. And this sync is great for creating very nasty leads, but once we add modulation to the pitch as well, you can get some very gnarly kind of sounds out of it. But that's what the sync does, guys. And again, we'll maybe use it to make some sounds at the end of this video. From there, that's the triple VCO. To the right of that, we're gonna have the volume, okay? Now, pretty self-explanatory volume for oscillator one, two, three, add a bit of noise which is gonna become very useful when you're trying to create or emulate analog, as some analog synths always had noise, like the Korg MS-20, a very noisy ch -ch kind of synth, which love or hate, you either love it for its flaws and whatnot. Uh, okay, so then from there, we're gonna have a feedback, which is gonna route the sound back into itself. Uh, and again, you, you use it to get like very gnarly sounds. I'm not gonna lie, with the feedback, I rarely play around with it. Uh, for me, it's just something that I'm just like never had the need for. But of course, you know, the idea of it is is that you're gonna route the sound back into itself, creating this nasty sort of distortion into it. Okay, so with that out of the way, that is the triple VCO. And as we move along, these guys, it's gonna be a little bit faster because it's all the same. But the triple VCO, guys, a couple of things. One, it's gonna be the highest CPU intensive oscillator that you can find in Diva, especially if you're running it in divine mode. So we can do that here. Okay, from there, we're gonna have the dual VCO, which to me is more like a Juno 60 kind of variant for some reason, uh, just the way that it looks. And notice that as I do this, we get something new that pops up over here, which we'll talk about later because that's now a new filter section as the volume knob has been transferred to here. Now, the thing with this guy here um, is that, as you can see, it works a little differently than the triple VCO. It doesn't have a wavetable knob selector, so you're gonna have to select which one you want, which again, that's why I consider it sort of like very similar to a Juno in a way. And again, we're gonna have a centered sound. So triangle. We're gonna have a saw. We're gonna have a square. And then we're gonna have the noise. And then we're gonna have the sync feature, which you kind of already know about, so we won't talk much about it as it works the same way. Uh, but the thing is now, instead of having two, three oscillators, we have two, and they're gonna work in conjunction. The cool thing about this guy is that you can stack these oscillators like the triangle saw and square together. Okay, uh, and as you can see, when adding a triangle, you make the saw sound a lot more stubby. Okay, so that's something cool about this guy. Uh, again, VCO, we have our ranges, which is our octave selections and whatnot. But as you notice, there's something new that popped up and that's this PWM and then the Nomad section. Now, this is only gonna work when you have a square selected. And then from there, you can see the PW has below it a one and a one plus two. That means you're only doing PWM to the first one. Not the second one. And when you activate this guy, now the second one. will also be pulse width modulated or reducing the, again, that little line that we saw. But again, like if I have plus one. Now this is super useful because sometimes you wanna layer sounds. Like for instance, let's say I have a saw here. 
And I want to layer it with the sound at the same octave, but I know that this saw is going to be more of a bass, and I don't need low end frequency coming from the next sound, so that's why I might use the pulse width to thin out, again, the second one. And add just a bit of grit on the top of the saw that I already have. So again, kind of a, a bit of mixing in a way, but it helps. Below that, we're going to have the shape, which is actually going to change the tone of the sound. If we go analog and we go ideal, you can hear it a lot better. Okay, and then to the left of that, again, we're just going to have this guys that we can mess with an oscillator too, the mix for volume. To the left of that, we're going to have the cross mod, which is just going to be the same thing as the triple VCO FM that we had before. So you kind of know how that works. And to the left of that, we're just going to have here the pitch modulation. So envelope two. Again, if we want to do it there to we put it here. Okay, if you want to create jungle terror, pew, 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 then that's how you do it. And then here you can change to two, to both, or split. So one sound gets and one sound doesn't. So you get the idea there with that. Um, and that's going to be the dual VCO. So as we move along, we're going to have now a DCO, which is just one. And again, it looks a little different because now we're going to have a sub volume. And the rest is going to be very similar in a way. But we'll talk more about these guys here because this one is the only one that gives you access to these sort of like saws, which are PWM, but I, I really don't understand, to be honest. And I'll show you how I use them personally. Uh, but the cool thing about this guy here is the fact that, okay, we already have the volume for this guy. Okay, and from there we can add a sub. So the way I would use the sub is one, I would put transpose. Transpose this to the bass. The lowest it can go and then I would play it up uh, higher octave. And from there I would bring in a sub, okay? And the cool thing about this sub is that now you can have multiple layers to the space. So you have an upper octave and the lower, which helps create a bass that sounds a lot better at lower keys. And that's the idea of it, that you can create a sound with high harmonics, a bass, and then layer more stack on top. Uh, and then from here, you can choose what kind of a sub oscillator you want for it. But again, the sub oscillator will always be an octave lower than whatever you've set this to. Okay, from there, now we can talk a lot of, uh, different about these wave tools below. So we have a saw. Then we're gonna have this saw, which again, I, I can't. Uh, talk is just the way it sounds. That's all I can really say. But then we can pulse modulate, pulse with modulate this saw. Which again, you kind of get the idea of the pulse with it. It sort of thins out the sound. But the thing about the pulse with it is that you can always modulate it with like an LFO. So we'll do LFO 2. Okay, so that's the cool thing about that. And then from there, and then we get different kind of saw waves to it. But the, the, the important thing to understand with these guys is just the tone that you get with them. So the way I would use these personally is let's say I have a square and I want to bring in like a higher end to the square. Maybe I'm trying to make a bell. Then I would come in with maybe uh, one, uh, one of those. <laughs> And then from there, if we add a bit of release, we get more of a bell kind of sound. But once you put reverb and delay on these, it sounds pretty good. Uh, but that's what we're going to have there, guys. So now we can kind of get rid of it and default it. And from the DCO, we're going to have the dual VCO echo, which, again... Similar to the other ones, uh, this is going to be the one that uses a less CPU because you're not going to have access to the FM uh, and, and sync and all of that. So you just got basic waveforms. Now, I will say, when I first saw this, it heavily reminded me of the Korg MS-20 and the way that it looks, the way of the knob. So it might be that. And if you go into the presets for template, um, you got the MS Rev 1. So that's what will come up like that. So again, it might be for that. I don't know. But again, in the filter section, we can also use the HPF Byte, which again reminds me very heavily of the Korg MS-20 because you would have a high-pass filter that was some of the best in the way that it would bite. And then you would have another filter here, which would look something like this. 
uh, not like that, but you get the idea. Uh, so that makes me feel like, again, uh, Korg MS-20 sort of vibes out of this guy, okay? But for now, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so it's very simple here, tune mod. That just means pitch envelope, so we can add the pew pew. Uh, we're gonna have different waveforms to choose. Square is the only one that you can pulse with. On this guy, on this guy, you don't have access to that, but you do have a ring, again, similar to the Korg MS-20. So it's gonna buy a bit of ring modulation, which again is really cool for um, sounds that that um, you kind of want to make them sound a certain way. Again, I can't explain the ring modulation because I can't explain it, but it's just more about the sounds that it gives you access. That's the best way to kind of learn it. So for instance, if I go very low on this and then have a very high pitch, so essentially I'm using this guy as a ring from this guy. You get really distinct sounds. You just got to play with the octaves. Okay, so again, the best way to say it is just kind of recognize the ring mod sound. If you ever want to use it, that's the best way to go about it. And from there, we finally reach the digital section, which personally I don't use a lot, but I can explain it to you guys. In the digital section, we're going to have access to a lot of different waveforms. We're going to have a triangle that gets warped, the tri-wrap, as they say, but it's a triangle with essentially where you can wave shape it with the wrap and the bend. But the first one is the more important one, which is the reason why you would want to go with the digital, as this is where you're going to get, I guess you could say, the JP8080 in a way, uh, Super Saw. So again, here we're going to have this guy, the mix to the left, so it's the volume. Now let's say I want to create a Super Saw out of that then what I'm going to do here is apply multi, which increases the amount of saws that we have. Okay, and that's the tone you get out of it. Notice that it's a lot warmer than Serum when you do that. And it's also in mono. That's the important thing. A lot of the sounds in Serum are made wide uh very fast because of the way Serum works. When you have saws and you multiply them, uh, some of them are pan left and right, and that's what gives you the width. And then we can do the detunement right here. So it sounds good. A little warm for some people. I can see that. But again, with processing, you can get this to sound the way that you want. Okay, uh, oops, we don't want to go there. So now we have the digital, the sauce, and we have the tri wrap. Usually for these, I would play it lower, and what I would do, the wrap. Again, we're going to go with the scope. Again, we're just modulating the waveform. Sort of gives you kind of like a fan vibes in a way. Okay, and then from there, we're going to have uh, the noise, which is super cool. <laughs> you can tune it, so it's kind of like the frequency it's at. The quadrant, so quadrant is just going to be on the tune where you're kind of boosting, let's say. And that creates sort of like a resonation, like someone's whistling in a post-apocalyptic world. So we can use this to create sort of like, um, how would you say it? Um, I guess uh, drones or effects, you know, like kind of like whoosh, uh, if that's what you want. Below the noise, we're going to have a uh, feedback uh, wave, which is just a saw that has been feedbacked into itself with a bit of short delay. And the tune controls the delay, according to Diva. And then the feedback is the amount. So we have the saw. Now we're feeding in another saw back into it. Okay, so we can get some very gnarly sounds with that, as you can see already. Even with a filter, just... Okay, and we'll talk more about that, because it's going to be fun when we finally have access to the filters. From there, we have the pulse, so PWM. And then we have a spike up, which sounds like a proper sync that you might find in Syrup. This is what I would use for uh, 80s kind of effects. So that would be with a bunch of reverb and delay, of course. From there, we have a saw. Again, these guys are just going to essentially manipulate the wave. Applying a bit of a bend to the wave. 
and of course you have harmonics and then from there we just have a triangle which and you can create bells with this so so i mean i, I think that's all we've made today bells The Ben adds a bit of a saw vibe too, but again, usually most of these guys in digital reminds you of a wavetable synth, and you're just manipulating the shape of the wave to get different sort of harmonics into it. So with the Ben, you get it to sound a little bit like a saw. It has been filtered, a little bit pleasing, old schooly, uh, which might intrigue uh, a, a couple people. Now the difference with the between the digital here now is that as you can see, there's these guys here, which we can activate in order to access to have access to modulation so on the harmonics so of course with that we can make some wubs and whatnot and from there as we go down you can do the bend okay so that's the going to be the difference there now we do have a high quality again i think it's self-explanatory what it does volume the ring mod again and then we're gonna have a tune mod which i think is very simple so with all of that guys we have access to all the vcos we understand how they do and what what's going on with them and how you can utilize them so now let's make a couple of sounds with what we've learned today just utilizing again the mixer and in the vcos or the oscillator section all right guys so the first sound that we're going to create is going to be a stab i think that's one of the more uh complex sounds we can create with just the oscillator section so we're going to go with all sauce for this now again the important thing here is that i don't want to utilize the inverted saw unless that's the effect i want the phasing out and whatnot so we're going to put the volume of all three at 12 o'clock just to kind of not clip okay from there let's go to c3 Get the scope out. And from there, one of them is going to go minus five, which is going to be the middle one, which will give us the perfect fifth. So let's go minus five perfect on it. This guy, the original, will go the lowest. And then this guy will go to plus three. So we're just going to set that up perfect there. So that way we have essentially a triad, but now... From here, I can get a little bit more um, intricate with my sound waveform selection. Maybe I just want this guy to be a triangle. So that way it's not producing too much of the low saw kind of grit. And from there, this guy, maybe we can go square. Okay, so that's going to be the sound. Now, if I played octave low. Let's play around with the values. Maybe this one. I want to make like one of those little kind of droney vibes. And there we have that sound. Now, if I put this guy down, then I get more of the... That nice little sound. Let's go 16. Okay, so there we have the first basic sound. Okay, from here, now we can go into digital, and of course, we can create the super saw. So let's see how nice we can get it to sound like just utilizing uh, the digital section in Diva. So I'm going to uh, input the high quality. I'm going to go to the mix here and put it at 12 o'clock. Now from here, let's kind of uh, initialize this guy and we'll have this guy maybe at there. So we have, again, saw, saw coming in. From here, let's get a multi. And then we're going to detune. Okay, again, just want to be careful with that. Let's lower the output a bit here. And now this guy, we're going to multi.
octave up. Uh, so we can create a lot of really. Okay, now I'll cheat a little and put a bit of reverb as these sounds are going to work best with. So we got essentially a super saw. I put this one up an octave to bring in a little bit more of um, air into it. We can go third. Um, but again, that's what that's going to be there for. So we kind of have that out of the way. Okay. From here, we can also create, um, let's see, we can create maybe a Juno 60 now and utilize another VCO just to see what kind of flavors we can get. For this one, I kind of want a saw and a bit of noise. Okay, get something of sorts. I can bring in a sub oscillator if I want to layer with a square below it. Okay, very nice sound. Again, we'll have access to a lot more other stuff once we get to work on stuff. But uh, from here, let's say I have this guy. Kind of low sounding, maybe we can pulse with and add a square. And get sounds like that. Now, of course, just because we have access to the oscillator section, a lot of these sounds are going to sound very raw. And that's the point of it. You know, this is where you start. And then from there, as you utilize an envelope and filter, you start to do a bit of subtractive synthesis. You take away from the sound, for instance to get it to sound a specific way. But again, at the end of the day, this is what we're going to start off with, okay? So from here, let's go back and let's see. Let's utilize maybe the MS Rev 1. Again, this reminds me a lot of the, the Korg MS 20. And let's see what we can do with this guy. Maybe we can kind of get a saw. And the MS 20 saw was very gritty, guys. Very nasty. And then we have it there. Let's see, let's make something high for, for a change. Let's add a bit of ring. This could be nice if you play low octave. It's gonna give a very nice kind of effect with reverb. Maybe even a bit of delay. Techno. Okay, I gotta add the effects because without the effects, I'm not gonna lie, you sound a little. Uh, but again, just having fun with it. So, so far as you can see, we're kind of making very basic sounds. And that's what Diva, you gotta understand, Diva's gonna give you these kind of sounds, but the best. It does that best. So, if you're looking for these kind of sounds, this is what Diva's all about. Now, let's go to the digital section as that's where we can get a little bit more like crazier. And let's go with, you know, the feedback really caught my attention. Uh, we're gonna go one and let's see uh, the tune holy shit Let's play around with the cross. You never know. A little trippy sounding. Again, this is not the traditional FM. I like the sound of this one. Oh, God. Oh, sh That's a cool effect if you can get a bit of, like, pan mod going on it. 
is like to get it white again we'll talk about this stuff later uh, because that's how you bring these sounds to life and whatnot but it's very important that you understand what we're doing here that's all and this is where the sound design journey starts guys so uh let's go back to the triple vco and and you know i like this noise and this is where you get some of the cleanest sound uh and let's see you know Let's see, let's get in a, uh, this guy, lower this. In fact, I think I want to do a sync. Let's go. Play around with that. That's the sync effect I was talking about. Yeah, and you can do that with the DT. Bringing it now and make it more complex. And I'm bringing back this oscillator, maybe with a pulse to give a bit of low end. And now we go. Let's add a bit of a tune mod, a little bit of change. In fact, I kind of want to do it with the LFO too. So here you can change the value of that. That's sounding massive. I like this one a lot. So it's a massive, massive, massive bass here. Now, Again, the last thing I'll say, and we'll end this video here with the oscillator section. You should be a pro at this now. Uh, again, practice making sounds. If this was a class, uh, a sound design class that I was teaching out of school, the homework would be to utilize only the oscillators and make as many sounds as you can with them. And again, get it close. I know you want to touch the filter and stuff. You can if you want. But again, we want to kind of just get com comfortable with this because this is where the basis of the sounds are going to come. And of course, learn your sauce. Try and hear some music. Go like, that's a saw. That's a square, etc. Okay, so this one sounds pretty cool and it can actually be usable in a song. Okay, uh, but again, with the hard sync, guys, uh, you can see I'm detuning, but it still sounds in the same key. You don't get like any of that um, chord kind of effect. And again, that's because of the sync. The hard sync, what it does, two and three become slaves to one. And whenever one changes like pitch and stuff, these guys are reset and they go back to the key this guy's in. But that change and that difference in pitch is what creates the effect that you hear. With that being said, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. This is a complete guide to Master Diva, episode one. Now you know your oscillator sections. You know what everything does. And next time we're going to talk about, again, more of the stuff here that we can see in the, in the mixer section, the filters. We already know what the feedback does. So filters play a huge role. And we're going to be able to make pads, really cool sounds with just the filters, bass lines that sound heavy, uh, subs, etc. once we have access to these filters. Last thing I'll add that I forgot to say is I think in one of the DCOs, I think it's a dual VCO, it's the only section where you can actually get a saw. If that's what you're looking for. If you just want a sub, a sign, and you want it from Diva, that's the only place you can get it in the dual VCO. With that being said, you guys take care, and I'll catch you guys next time for another video. This has been the Complete Guide to Master Diva. Peace out.